Indonesia is the world's fourth most populous country and the largest archipelago, comprising more than 17,000 islands. Its diverse population is home to over 300 ethnic groups and more than 700 languages. This complex and vibrant nation has undergone significant transformations since gaining independence from Dutch colonial rule in 1945, led by its founding father, Sukarno. The construction of modern Indonesia can be broadly divided into three periods. Sukarno's guided democracy, Suharto's new order, and the reform era. The first phase of modern Indonesia's development began with the establishment of the Republic of Indonesia under the leadership of President Sukarno. Sukarno's administration was characterized by the concept of guided democracy, a political system in which the executive branch led by the president held considerable power and influence over the legislative and judicial branches. During Sukarno's tenure, Indonesia pursued a policy of non-alignment and played a significant role in the formation of the non-aligned movement, which sought to maintain neutrality in the context of the Cold War. Economically, Sukarno adopted a state-led development model, with a focus on import substitution industrialization and nationalization of key industries. However, the guided democracy period was also marked by political instability, with tensions arising between the central government, the military, and the Indonesian Communist Party PKI. In addition to political challenges, Indonesia faced severe economic difficulties during this period, including high inflation, a growing budget deficit, and a deteriorating balance of payments. The second phase of modern Indonesia's development began with the rise to power of General Suharto, following the turbulent events of 1965 to 1966, which saw the alleged coup attempt by the PKI and the subsequent mass killings of suspected communists. Suharto's administration, known as the New Order, was characterized by a strong central government, an emphasis on political stability, and a focus on economic development. Under Suharto, Indonesia embarked on a series of economic reforms aimed at promoting foreign investment, export-oriented industrialization, and infrastructure development. These reforms, coupled with the discovery of significant oil reserves in the 1970s, led to a period of rapid economic growth, with GDP growth averaging 7% per year between 1967 and 1981. This growth was accompanied by significant improvements in social indicators, such as life expectancy, literacy, and poverty reduction. Despite the economic success of the New Order, Suharto's administration was also characterized by widespread corruption, crony capitalism, and human rights abuses. Furthermore, the economic growth experienced during this period was accompanied by growing income inequality and environmental degradation. The third phase of modern Indonesia's development began with the fall of Suharto in 1998, following the Asian financial crisis and widespread protests against his regime. The post-Suharto era, also known as the Reform Era, has been characterized by a transition to a more democratic political system, greater regional autonomy, and continued efforts to promote economic growth and development. The Reform Era saw the introduction of several key political reforms, including the direct election of the president, the decentralization of government authority, and the strengthening of political institutions. These reforms have contributed to a more robust and pluralistic political landscape with multiple political parties and civil society organizations playing active roles in shaping Indonesia's future. Economically, Indonesia has pursued a more market-oriented approach to development during the reform era. Key economic policies have included deregulation, liberalization of trade and investment, and efforts to improve governance and reduce corruption. These policies have contributed to Indonesia's steady economic growth, with GDP growth averaging 5.3% per year between 2000 and 2019. This growth has been accompanied by continued progress in poverty reduction and improvements in human development indicators. However, the reform era has also been marked by persistent challenges, including income inequality, environmental degradation, and the need for more inclusive and sustainable growth. Additionally, the country continues to grapple with issues related to corruption, governance, and the balance between national and regional interests. Jokowi, a former entrepreneur and mayor, rose to prominence due to his pragmatic and results-oriented approach to governance. His administration has sought to address some of the persistent challenges faced by Indonesia while building on the progress made during the reform era. Infrastructure Development 
Jokowi's administration has prioritized infrastructure development as a key driver of economic growth and regional connectivity. Major projects launched during his tenure include the construction of highways, ports, airports, and mass rapid transit systems. These infrastructure investments aim to improve connectivity between the country's diverse regions, reduce logistical costs, and promote economic development in previously underserved areas. Economic Inclusivity Jokowi has pursued policies aimed at promoting economic inclusivity and reducing income inequality. This includes efforts to strengthen social welfare programs, such as the expansion of the national health insurance system and the provision of cash transfers to low-income households. Additionally, the administration has sought to promote the growth of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises MSMEs, by providing access to financing and training opportunities. Governance and Anti-Corruption Jokowi's administration has continued to focus on improving governance and combating corruption. This has involved strengthening the role of the Corruption Eradication Commission KPK, and promoting transparency in government procurement processes. Jokowi has also sought to streamline bureaucracy and improve public service delivery through digitalization and the use of technology. Several key factors have played a significant role in shaping the development of modern Indonesia. These factors include leadership. The administrations of Sukarno, Suharto, and post-Suharto leaders have each had a profound impact on the course of Indonesia's development. The policies and priorities of each administration have influenced the country's political, economic, and social trajectory. Natural Resources Indonesia's vast natural resources including oil, natural gas, minerals, and agricultural commodities have played a critical role in driving the country's economic growth and development. Demographics Indonesia's large and diverse population has been both an asset and a challenge in the country's development. The country's youthful population has provided a substantial labor force, while the diversity of ethnic groups and languages has contributed to a rich cultural tapestry. However, this diversity has also led to regional disparities and occasional ethnic tensions. Geopolitics Indonesia's strategic location and non-aligned foreign policy have shaped its regional and global relationships. As the world's largest archipelago, Indonesia has significant geopolitical importance, particularly in relation to maritime trade and regional security. Global Economic Trends Indonesia's development has been influenced by global economic trends, such as the rise of China, the Asian financial crisis, and fluctuations in commodity prices. These trends have shaped the country's economic policies and its integration into the global economy. Indonesia's progress in building a modern nation has been remarkable, but it has also faced several persistent challenges throughout its history. Here, we identify and discuss key factors that have contributed to Indonesia's problems. Corruption and weak governance. Corruption has been a pervasive issue in Indonesia, affecting various sectors of society and government. Weak governance structures and bureaucracy have allowed corruption to thrive, leading to an inefficient allocation of resources, decreased trust in public institutions, and hindered economic development. Income inequality Indonesia has experienced significant economic growth, but the benefits have not been evenly distributed among its population. Income inequality remains a major concern, with a widening gap between the rich and the poor. This can lead to social unrest and hinder progress in poverty reduction and overall development. Ethnic and religious tensions Indonesia's diverse population with over 300 ethnic groups and various religious affiliations has led to occasional ethnic and religious tensions. These conflicts can undermine social cohesion and national unity, posing challenges to the country's stability and development. Decentralization and regional disparities The decentralization of government authority during the reform era has led to greater regional autonomy, but it has also resulted in significant disparities in development between regions. In conclusion, the construction of modern Indonesia has been shaped by a complex interplay of political, economic, and social factors. From its early years under Sukarno's guided democracy, through the rapid economic growth and political stability of Suharto's new order, to the democratic reforms and market-oriented policies of the reform era, Indonesia has undergone significant transformations in its journey towards development. By examining the key events, policies and factors that have shaped modern Indonesia, we can better appreciate the challenges and opportunities that the country continues to face in its ongoing quest for progress, stability, and prosperity.